be at all controversial. Welcome everyone to another video on the channel and today we're going to be going through every single Forest player, putting them in a tier list based off how they have done this season. So there's going to be quite a few in poor and average and in fact the tiers are bong, good, average, poor and waghorn. You go in waghorn if you either haven't played or you've been just that terrible. I don't normally say this at the start of videos, but if you do enjoy this, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and follow my Twitter as well. There'll be a link below because we're trying to go for 2K as soon as we can on YouTube and that'll be unreal if we can do that. Please as well, let me know if you want me to do any more content like this where I'm, I'm grading stuff. I did it quite a bit last year over the first lockdown. I can always do it again if you want. So yeah, let's get going. First player and we're starting quite strong. A player that must be absolutely worn out the amount of games that he has played. Diallo, our backup goalkeeper. And not just our backup goalkeeper, he is our third choice goalkeeper, this guy is. He, he, I mean, it's, it's harsh because he's not played a game. But like I said, Waghorn, you go in there if you've not played. And he hasn't played a single minute, even been on the bench. Brice Samba, this guy, I'm sorry. He's going in bong. And I'll tell you this, all right, he's got quite a bit of stick at times this season. But I think every player has got some form of abuse this year because we've been in a relegation battle at times this season and we still aren't really away from danger just yet. So of course, you're not going to be perfect. But if it wasn't for Samba, I think we'd be even more in trouble. We'd be in the relegation zone, in my opinion, if we didn't have Samba. He's still saved us on numerous occasions. He may have made the odd mistake, but everyone makes mistakes in football. If, Sam if Samba gets injured, <laughs> I, I seriously worry. And this is why I worry Jordan Smith would be the man to replace him. And this is a little bit harsh because he's not really played much either. He's only played one game all year as well against Cardiff in the FA Cup third round. But I'm going to put him in Waghorn because I, I'm i not a big fan of Jordan Smith. When he has played for us, he's been alright, but that's about as far as he'd go. I do think we ought to try and get a better backup goalkeeper because, like I just said, if we lose Samba, then... He is integral. We will struggle. And I don't think that Jordan Smith is a terrible goalkeeper, but I just don't think he... Maybe we, sh we should sell him for the good of his career, just sitting on the bench every week. Scott McKenna, I'm going to put him in good. I think that's at least where he should be graded on this tier list. Very good player. He looks really solid in a partnership with Wall, particularly in the last few games. They have looked like a real solid set of centre-backs to have. He's been solid. We were linked with him literally the year before and we got our man, of course, this this season. Jack Colback. No, no. This this is not the Jack Colback that we had on loan. That Jack Colback has been taken hostage by Newcastle's reserves because that's where Colback was the last year before we rejoined us. He didn't play a minute of football for Newcastle when he went back there. He was on loan to us twice before and he came back this season. Been our captain at times. Jack Colback's been your captain, hence why we're 19th in the league, but still, he's just pretty terrible. I'm sorry, maybe this is harsh, but I'm putting him in Waghorn. Fouled Bashiru, now I'm thinking of putting him in poor, but that's a little bit harsh, being his, he's only played one game. I don't want to overload Waghorn, but I think Bashiru was always going to be a player that was just going to be more of a backup option, more of a you know, squad depth. So, Waghorn, it, it doesn't mean that you're absolutely terrible. It means that, and it also means that if you just haven't played any football, he hardly has kicked a ball. So, I think Waghorn. Samba So, I think average, to be quite honest. He's not been quite as good as he was last season. I think everyone knew that when Samba So was in our team, we were fantastic. He, like, made the midfield work. He glued it together. This year, no, like I said with Samba, none of the players this season have been as good as they were last year. Until recently, really, where we're unbeaten in seven somehow. He is one of the most injury-prone players probably ever to play for Forest. Like, the amount of times he's randomly out of the team because he's injured is amazing. Cafu. Now, I won't lie, I wasn't a big fan of us signing him. I didn't really think we needed him because we have a ridiculous amount of defensive-minded players. We didn't need him. We got rid of Thiago Silva to Olympiacos. Shock horror there. He is a, more of an attacking kind of player. And we sell uh, Thiago Silva and we bring in a defensive kind of player in Cafu. Didn't really make much sense to me. It's quite strange really with Cafu because his first 14 games, he was either on the bench 
and didn't come on or he was just left out the team completely and yet since then since the start of December our draw with Watford 0-0 he has played every game and he's played a full 90 minutes every time he's not been unreal he has definitely improved recently I think that assist that he got for Ribeiro against Sheffield Wednesday was very good maybe you could say that it was a misplaced pass. He was just trying to aim for Lau Taylor instead. But it was a goal, so I think we can look at look that aside, really, don't we? I think Kaffir is about right to put him in average. 10 games, 1 assist at the time of recording anyway. I'm, I'm doing this after Millwall. My, I did my notes before Millwall, so... Yeah, just bear that in mind. Ryan Yates. I think Ryan Yates deserves to be in good at the very, very minimum. Um, I don't think he's been in bong because he's... Mm, I don't think that's quite right. He did get sent off as well against Reading when he became Maradona 2.0. One thing you can always bet with Ryan Yates is he will always put in a shift. You'll never see him slacking like other players do occasionally. Ryan Yates, that's one of the reasons why I respect him because he tries. Joe Lolly. Not the Joe Lolly of old, that's for sure. I'm going to put him in average. Not been the same this season. 21 games, or maybe 22 games. Because, again, I'm recording this after Millwall. 21, 22 games, one goal. For one of our arguably best players and one of the players that we rely on, that's terrible. He's not even got any assists either. And I just... What's happened? Is, is something going on in his life maybe off behind the scenes or... Is he just been affected by, you know, lack of confidence? I don't know. It's weird. Alex Mighton. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was actually considering putting him in bong. Because whenever he's played, he has not put a foot wrong. But maybe I, I don't want to fall for overhyping him. So maybe I'll just put him in good. Maybe I'm wrong with that. Let me know in the comments below. I'll put a, in fact, I'll put a link in the description if you want to do this yourself. He's one of the players that brings a lot of energy to our game. Pace flair he'll always give 100% you can tell that he's eager because he's young for starters I just can't wait until we sell him to Olympiacos in a few years for about a million quid and we get one of their outcasts who's in his 30s Sammy Amiobi played an absolute blinder against Millwall the other day. Credit to him for that. But overall this season, he has been really quite average, honestly. 22 games, 3 goals. No assists either. It's a little bit disappointing, really. He's one of those players that is, on his day, a quality player. He really is. But when he isn't on his game, he is terrible. And I think every fan of every club that he's played for says that about Sammy Amiobi. Luke Freeman, I'm not a massive fan of uh, Freeman, to be honest. Um, he got a goal for us, of course, against Bristol City. And that was our first goal in bloody ages. When was it? Preston last season. It was about seven games we hadn't scored a goal. He's not played since Barnsley away when we lost 2-0. He's not played since then. So a long time he's been out for. Lewis Graben. Like Joe Lolly, not been the same this season. It's not helped the fact that he's been injured for a good chunk of it. Only got two goals before his injury. He was absolutely woeful. Missing sitters after sitters constantly. I can think of one against Cardiff, one against two against QPR. That absolute probably one of the worst misses I've ever seen against Rotherham. Like, come on. Grabs. What's happened to you, mate? He's been given a lot of stick this season. People saying that Lyle Turner should start over him. I personally think he should do, to be honest. But Graben is still a fantastic striker. Tobias Figueredo, my word. <laughs> the amount of stick that this lad gets. I'm going to put him in poor. I think it's only fair. He's not been good this season. He has kind of improved like the entire squad has the last month or so. But... He's not been great at all, as we to say the very least. I, we know that he, he is a good player because he played really well for us last season. He was solid here in Wall together, but he's just not been the same this year. Gaitang Bong. Now, um, <laughs> people are just going to want me to put him in Bong, aren't they? No, no, come on, let's be serious for once. Bong, I'm going to put him in poor at the very least. I don't. If this was a few weeks ago, he would have been in Waghorn because he never plays games. But against Cardiff in the Cup, he was genuinely decent. Like, he actually was. So I think for that reason, poor. But he's still not great, really, is it? Because you're poor. Miguel Angel Guerrero, I'm not a fan. At the, at the, at the very least, what does he actually do? What, what does he actually do? He's just one of those many, many players we didn't actually need. From. Olympiacos. Olympiacos. Can you believe it? Lau Taylor. Only the second player 
that's deserved of going in bong. He's one of the few players that's actually scored multiple times this season. I think Amiobi now with his two yards against Millwall is the second top scorer of three, but Lautelli got five. You know, I think it's really sad that he isn't starting games more. He was starting obviously when Gavin was injured, but I still think he deserves to, just because Gavin's back. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just, I'd be starting Taylor. This is a man that's the only player in the squad that scored several times, and we're benching him. Will Swan, this is quite strange really, because I don't really know what to grade him. Waghorn is very, very harsh, because he's only played half an hour of football all year in two games off the bench against Reading and Swansea, the other way around, but still, where do I put him? Poor is unfair, average maybe, but again, he's only played half an hour of football. Harry Arter, another one that's going to go in average, because he's not really lived up to the hype. I think a lot of us were very excited bringing in a player like Harry Arter, been there and done it before, lots of Premier League experience, international experience too, but he just hasn't been quite at it. You can tell that he's been frustrated. There's been quite a few times where he's been shouting at the referees, you know, arguing about a decision, but he's not been great. Was a Joe Wall, you go in bomb, mate, and you can stay there forever. If we lose Joe Wall, then I, I do worry. I do quite considerably worry because he holds the defence together. He gives 110% every game, just like Ryan Yates. He's one of our own, so he knows what the club's all about. He supports Forrest, so he's going to try even harder, isn't he? Plus the fact he's absolutely brilliant. And if we lose him on top of cash in a year, I'm going to cry. Anthony Knockart, not been quite as good as we expected him to, but I think good because he's one of the few players that has actually created chances for us this season actually has looked good at times anyway. I think towards the end of his last few games where he was just on loan for his first spell because obviously he's back now, um, he was improving. He got man of the match against Stoke away, got an assist in that game. He scored a great goal away at Norwich as well. He should have had his goal against Brentford counter, not that it would have mattered in the end. He's also got two assists as well, which you live to see. Loic MB so He's not, he's not had the chance. He's not had the chances. He has been an expert in bench warming. He has gone from seeing Thiago Silva and Monquinhos play in front of him at PSG. That's Paris Saint-Germain, the team that wins the French division every single year. The team that literally lost the Champions League final in, when was it? August. Yes, August. Like, what else do I say? He hasn't had the chances. I really feel sorry for him. Just like Maiten. I think both of them have, should deserve to play more than they have done. The fact that we spent four and a half million on MB So and he's only played four games, I think he's criminal. I think that's ridiculous. So I'm going to put him in average just basically because he hasn't had the chances really to prove himself. Maybe good. Maybe good, but I mean, I, I'm not sure. You let me know in the comments. Michael Dawson. Now, this is very, very harsh because, again, a bit like with Diallo and, uh, I mean, obviously, Bashery's only played once. Smith has only played once. Dawson's not played a single minute. He's basically more of a coach these days, really, which I think is the only reason why he actually signed a deal. Every game, he's pretty much every game, he's been on the bench, but a few times he's not even been included on the bench. He has had an injury as well. I think his future definitely lies in the coaching role at Forest rather than on the pitch. I think Waghorn is probably only fair, being as he's not played any games. Tyler Blackett. You know what I'm going to do for this? I think I'm going to create an entire new tier for Tyler Blackett. Yeah, add row below. Tyler. Okay, that was good. Tyler. Can't use a computer. Tyler Blackett. There we go. Yuri Ribeiro, he's one of the few players that, regardless of the result, you can tell that he is always trying, he's always putting in an effort. You can tell that he's frustrated that we're not winning more, and it's fantastic that more recently we're finally seeing that from the entire squad. The squad actually looked like they care again. But um, um, and so, Ribeiro has done that all year, and I think good is the least. He should be ranked. So is Christie. There's a hell of a lot of players in average, really, isn't they? And I'm afraid you're going to join him. I don't rate Cyrus Christie that highly. I think a few people have said that he's been good. A few people have said that he's been terrible. It's one of those that kind of mixes opinions, really. Let's just put it this way. I definitely wouldn't keep him. <laughs> I wouldn't keep him. I wouldn't be surprised if we did because he's not really got a future at Fulham, especially if they stay in the Premier League. He definitely has not got a future at Fulham. To be fair to him, though, he's had a few good moments, like against uh, Wick 
like him that assist that he got for Taylor I thought that was a really good goal really good build up everything so credits him for that but he just needs to do it a little bit more often and let's not forget this he is a massive massive downgrade on Matty Cash okay whoever replaced Cash it was always going to be really difficult to do that but come on he, he was he could have done better in my opinion we could have signed a better player than him Carl Jenkinson Again, average. Again, I'm, I'm sorry to overload that tier, but that kind of sums up this season. To be fair though, Jenkinson, when he has played, he has looked pretty good. He's looked pretty good, but he's nothing special, really. I'm, I've never been a big fan of Jenkinson, really. Um, I think the fact that they're both our main right backs is definitely an area we need to improve in the summer or even January, but I doubt it. And again, a bit like MBSO, he is the definition of a bench warmer. And these last two, they may as well just be done at the same time. Zach Clough for Michael Heffler. Why are they still being paid ridiculous wages every week to not even get close to the first team? It says a lot when Zach Clough is in a forest shirt from not this season, not last season, not the season before that, the one before that. That is a forest shirt from four seasons ago. That says everything about how his career has gone down the drain at Forest. He has not played a game for us since the 27th of January, 2018. Against Hull away in the FA Cup and we lost 2-0. And that was three years ago. Same for Michael Heffler. He's not played since New Year's Day, 2019, against Leeds and we won 4-2. That's... Just why are they still on our books? They're still training to do nothing. So there we go, lads. That is my ranking of every single Forest player in the current squad this season. Of course, I'm recording this on the 17th of January. So if you have signed a player, then, you know, just bear that in mind. But then again, it doesn't really matter because I'm grading this off them playing for Forest this season, not another club. So I don't really know why I said that. But of course, if you have enjoyed, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It means... A massive amount, lads. Honestly, it does. Uh, please follow my Twitter, at rads underscore 23, and also my Instagram if you want. We are trying to go for 2K as soon as we possibly can. Let's try and get 2K before the Euros. Before the Euros. Let's try and get to 2,000 subscribers before the Euros, at least. But yeah, I'll see you on Wednesday for the Middlesbrough stream, and there'll also be a preview video for the Swansea game with Tristan24, another YouTuber who does... A lot of Swansea content, general football, FIFA, basically what I do on my channel, really. Very good guy. Please do go and subscribe to him as well. And we're also going to be doing a watch along together for Swansea in the Cup. So it's going to be very interesting that. Looking forward to doing something a little bit different this week. And yeah, lots of content coming on the channel. Look forward to it. I'll see you very soon.